Hey guys, my name is Chris, and last year I went on one of the most life-changing travel trips of my entire life. But before we get into this documentary, let me give you a little backstory. So to start, February 2019, I got a gift from my parents to take a trip to three, three different countries, Germany, Switzerland, and England. This is something I never thought I'd be able to do this young at my age. Now I've gone on other travel adventures, but nothing past the United States. And this was something that was very different from what I had ever done. So the time passed from February to August where it was coming up to the start of our journey. So we traveled from August 8th to around August 17th. We got back a Saturday. So it was practically nine or 10 days that we were out and exploring. So that was pretty awesome. I, re I documented the entire thing, hence this documentary. And over the past nine months, I've been trying to edit all these videos, not knowing where I would go with them. Just basically trying to edit each individual one to put up on this channel. And eventually I came to this idea of putting this all into one documentary and that was probably a very good idea because now I get to look back on all these memories in one spot, one journey, one movie and it's honestly pretty awesome. So now we're here. It is May 14th, 2020. We're in quarantine. So let me take you on a trip into my past and let you enjoy Three, a travel documentary. Whew, I've been trying to handle everything right now. I'm so tired. Um, I basically have everything packed right here and then in uh, my backpack and it's going pretty nicely. Um, I'm leaving soon and yeah, I'll see you guys soon. All right, so. We are leaving pretty soon, but right now I'm putting we're all putting suitcases in the car. Just not in our own car. Wait. Yes, in our own car. So we just got up TSA and we are now headed to our gate. So we just got off of the planes for from American Airlines and while now we are heading into a train down into central central London. This is a Indian line service to Cockfosters. Hello. Hello. So after taking multiple train rides to get down to central London, underground, underground trains and just upground trains, whatever you want to call it, we finally made it to kind of central kind of the central London. You can see a lot of the landmarks over here, like the London Bridge to my left, and then a bunch of other bridges to my right. So it's pretty cool. And then the Shard is right in front of me. And I'm pretty sure Big, Big Ben is a little off to the left of the London Bridge. So that is pretty cool. Uh, it's also pretty cool looking at the architecture up there behind me, but that's pretty much it in this area. I mean, there's also the river in front of me. Uh, just bridges over there. So it's pretty cool so far. And I think we are all gonna have uh, a pretty fun time, a great time. So I'm really looking forward to it.
so after doing a little walking around just this whole area we are we are going right now to a four hour or so or something walk tour around the city but we shall see what this is like i'm sure it'll just be a lot of sightseeing and all that and some maybe a basic or in-depth history about the city so it should be pretty cool So I don't know if you can tell by the scenery change or not, but I am in Germany right now uh, alongside with my family and my aunt who we are staying, who lives, who is stationed here and we're staying in her apartment. So it's, it's really nice. The apartment is right, right there. I'm just filming outside on the porch and it's spacious. It's, it's good. It's going to be a great stay for the next couple of days while we're here so basically the next couple of days we'll be traveling throughout germany and then we're gonna be going to switzerland to see the alps which is gonna be really cool the train so i'm pretty excited to be able to get a chance to be in a different country for the first time besides London which we I was in earlier today now I will be going back to London later in the trip because that's just the way we plan our trip this is gonna be it for now I'm gonna be getting ready for bed so I am going to end it off here and I guess I will see you guys all tomorrow enjoy so it is the next day and it is around 4 o'clock right now. We all just woke up about an hour ago. We're about to be heading out to downtown Sugar right now and I'm looking forward to it. The uh, view outside right now is a little bit, you can see a lot more from last night. So I believe the downtown Sugar is all the way over there. But this is how it looks outside in the daylight. It's a lot nicer. Looking forward to seeing how a uh, European city looks in person, and I'll see you guys there. Gin dobre. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Gin dobre. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't know? You don't know. Well, of course I don't know. Thank you. 
downtown Stuttgart. The look of it is fairly close to American, an American mall, just an outside one, but this is it so far. mall right now and uh, take a look at this. It's pretty, it's pretty weird. Like we're literally just in, in this and Pigeon just walking around like it's owning the place. So we just got done eating at a little restaurant all the way back over there. I'm sure I'll have the name posted up here, but it was really nice. I got a, a pork thing, and like you saw, I I tried beer for the first time. That was pretty interesting. So I'm about to drink my uh, first first glass of beer. like it mu that much which actually is kind of a good sign hopefully my taste buds won't change too much in the next few years so I don't get addicted would be really nice but restaurant was 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 great and now we're just walking through Stug Stugart during the night so it should be a pretty good time and enjoy the rest of the day So even though we are in a foreign country, it's really surprising to hear all the music. I mean, obviously there are music, there's music that comes from Germany, but then there's a bunch of universal music that you hear all the time. So it's kind of cool to hear music from the, that you'd usually hear in America then you, that you, and hearing it here. The only song I did notice was throughout some of the European countries was uh, just some classical music. Um, I'm sure it originated somewhere in France or, or England, but it is it is pretty cool to just have that aspect of universal we adapted music. All right, so we just got back to the the apartment right now and I'm not gonna be on the porch because actually it just started raining but I just want to give you a quick little tour of not the apartment itself but just really where we are staying myself and my my brother so we're just sleeping in the couches for the next couple of days um, so I brought a backpack with me and a suitcase which is under this towel this is just a little little side, little comparison of where we're 
sort of staying for the next couple of days until we go back to stay in a hotel at London. So I'm going to be ending this vlog off for tonight and catch up with you guys tomorrow. So I hope you all enjoyed this day and tomorrow will be even greater. So see you then. So there are definitely going to be some really beautiful shots up here, especially looking at this. This, this is crazy looking. You really don't get a view like that often. So I'm really excited to be in a place like this for the first time. Just seeing everything in person, stuff you wouldn't really usually see in the States. It's insane. I mean, look at that. It's, crazy. So we've been walking all the way up from bottom which looks like that it's kind of uh, hard to look down we're gonna be taking the slide down as you can see but we're almost to the top right now and the view is gonna be incredible here take a look at this Now we are heading back down along the inner circles and we're going to the slide right over there. That's the entrance. Cost two euros. And if you were wondering, the minimum age is six years and two euros per slide. So if you're ever coming here, just know that. Well, you guys know how this goes uh, afterwards. <laughs> and also give you a little, little preview of how my mom Mom's gonna feel about it. Good luck, Mom. Are you okay, Mom? Yeah. Can you I enjoy very, it? I, yeah, I mean, I was very dizzy when I got off. First impressions, it was like 10 seconds long and made me a little dizzy, but uh, fun time, fun, fun ride overall, so definitely suggest it. But anyways, right now, we are walking, kind of hiking through the rest of the Black Forest. I'm not sure how much longer we're gonna stay in here. But after this, we're going down to a castle, which I'm not really sure, not really sure the type of castle or what it's called, but for now we are just hiking. That's where we were just a little bit ago while we were hiking, while we were walking alongside here to get to the, the big slide all the way over there. Should have it on the rotating. 
So we're not in Tubingen yet, but we are actually we actually stopped on the way. It's a really interesting town. I think it's just either the name of the castle or the name of the town. But either way, we stopped in this kind of big, big town, little town uh, that's surrounded by mountains. And as you can see up there, there are a bunch of houses behind me, the hotel, and then a bunch of other houses all the way up there. So people are just living on the side of mountains and it's kind of neat that people will choose this type of lifestyle. I know I would at least try a type of lifestyle like that. Anyways, walking through the town now and we'll see how this, where this little sidewalk will, will take us. So, sounds good. <laughs> so we just stopped on our way down to the castle all the way up there not sure if you can I can't even see it up see it from here but just found this whole herd of sheep it's kind of funny so low. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's falling. Oh. Okay. You didn't really need to see that. Next stop is the castle if nothing else stops us along the way. So we kind of just finished up the tour in this giant castle and that view is massive. I mean, that's insane just how far down everything is. But take a look at that really quick. The third, fourth, and fifth. I'll just give you some basic information about all of this. There's reconstruction in the 1300s or so. I know there's a lot of history. I'm not very good at everything, but wow. <laughs> so 
So, for the past couple of hours, we've been walking around this entire big sort of lot filled with food and uh, tourist attractions. And it's pretty nice. We, had, we just ate and we're staying for a light show that's supposed to happen in about an hour or so. And it's just a pretty good, good night. But we're gonna be probably leaving right after the light show. And that's probably gonna be it for the day. the Swiss Alps all the way back there. Not going there today, but plan was two. But those, those are real mountains. All right, so right now we are on just a little deck type thing and we're waiting to get on these ferry boats that will take us around the lake uh, called Lake Zurich ironically and it's around 135 right now at our time is 140 to get on and hopefully I'll get some cool shots
We just got off of the ferry and while I'm still kind of in the moment, I want to give you guys a little of my experience through that, just seeing the Alps a little bit closer. So that was pretty cool. I know I've always liked nature. I like forests and, you know, movies that go where people go into crazy nature places like, say, Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. I don't know. Something about it is seeing the world in a different type of view is can be really interesting and and crazy but just the view was incredible i honestly wish we could have got could have gotten closer now i also said i said that we are not going to the alps today what i meant that we're not going to the alps on to the alps on the entire trip we we're originally going to go climb up like actually climb on the alps which would be take a whole day but we decided against it cuz it was a three-hour, uh, three-hour car ride to it, and you know it's just a long time. But so far today has been pretty good. I mean, that's the only thing we've done. The ferry. What the? It's not a boat. Dock here, like in the edge of the, the lake itself. Huh. Cool, but. I think having a pretty good time here learning about all, seeing all the Switzerland culture and architecture and everything. The, where the game, so where yeah. the dog can go No, no, then you need to go where the other dog is, but the uh, there you can go inside and walk the tube. Yes, yes. All right, so we are back at the apartment right now. We left around six o'clock. It takes two and a half hours to get from from Switzerland back here to Germany. And I stopped really filming at three o'clock. We went out to dinner at around five and we had fondue, this really good fondue place. But it was really good. They didn't have chocolate fondue like they have in America, but they had cheese fondue, which all of us got except my brother. And it was really good. Through the gift shops that were open, there's not many open because it's Sunday, I found a Swiss, found a Swiss compass in a Swiss, Swiss gear store. And it's pretty nice. It works the majority of time from what I've tested so far. And it's just a nice little souvenir to have remembering Switzerland itself but my goal is to have one souvenir per country anyways that has been it for today we've all had a great time and car ride was long five hours in total but that's a risk you can take to take to see the Alps but tomorrow we're going down to Munich and in a concentration camp and that should be pretty interesting but that has been it I will see you guys all tomorrow. Alright, so I'm taking out the smaller camera today only because it's raining out and I don't want to risk getting the bigger camera wet. But we're here at Daku, the Daku concentration camp. But we are here now. You can see up there, there are hard wire all along. And this should be pretty interesting. See, see, see a concentration camp in person for the first time. Kind of nervous, but kind of excited too.
have to admit, these, this is really creepy. Like just, this, you, can, you can't really see that far in video. That, that thing goes down, this hall goes down so far. You can take a look to the other side. So far down. And then over right here are just a bunch of the rooms. Let's get you a look at one of them. I mean, they smell old. Like it's crazy. Like this. It smells weird. I don't know. It smells really weird. It's really creepy. Just. That's really creepy. Driving from the concentration camp, we ended up right in the center of, of Munich here in Germany. Architecture right here in front of me is crazy. because that was too much but anyways we're walking and we're just looking at, at looking at all the shops and just seeing what else there is So we are out here in Dubig in Germany. I'm not sure entirely if we're staying here the entire day. Because I know my mom wanted to go to a different type of town. But anyways, we left our apartment, or my aunt's apartment, about an hour ago. And we're staying here for now. Unless plans change. And when we say when I say we left the apartment, we left it for good. Like we're not we're not going back because we're leaving for the plane plane ride to London at nine. And right now we're just, just exploring everywhere and seeing what everything has to offer. But that is it for now. And hopefully I'll just in, we'll just enjoy the rest of our day.
so we are now back in Stuttgart after being in Tübingen for about four to five hours and right now we are going up a TV station and this is just a little off downtown Stuttgart but it's pretty tall and we're gonna be able to stand outside so this should be pretty cool. So we are leaving for the changing of the guards right now. Hopefully it doesn't get canceled because of the rain. But we're gonna see. Alright, so we are on our way right now. As you can see, it's pretty bad. We are on all it's by umbrellas. And it's not too far away. Hopefully it still is going on. So being back here in London, I'm finally able to see that the Big Ben is under complete reconstruction. Like almost no, nothing is really recognizable except for the location. But that kind of sucks that I'm not able to see it for the first in person. Maybe another time though. But anyways, we're going to the London Eye over there behind this building right here. That should be cool, even though know, it is raining. Hopefully we should be able to see a good amount of up on it. So we've been walking around all over London and right now we're in St. James Park and just take a look, take a look at this. You can literally get so close to every single bird. This is insane. You would never see this back at home. Ha <laughs> 
Por que dois fracos? Por que dois Did they really? Yeah. He's, he's, he's telling the squirrel to go away. So it is around 7.20 right now and as you just saw, we're going to be, be doing a track to Ripper night tour. Get to learn a little bit about some of the different locations. He committed crimes. It's, it's going to be a two hour, two hour walk tour. And this should be pretty interesting. So enjoy. Now in the morning after the actual murder itself on the Friday morning, there was a man called John McCarthy. He was landlord to number 13 Miller's Court. He decided to get some back rent that Mary Kelly owed him, so he sent his gopher. He banged on the door, no reply. Went around the side of the building and tried to, to sort of see where he could look. But the, the windows were all filthy dirty, except for there was one with his painted glass broken. And he pushed through a bit of a filthy old rag. As he looked towards the darkness and the gloom, what he saw on the bed uh, was so shocking, he immediately ran back to John McCarthy and the alarm was raised. One of the first on the scene of the crime was Inspector Abilene from Scotland Yard otherwise known as Johnny Depp. And he realized the front door was locked by a front door key they couldn't find. They were forced to break it down with an old pickaxe handle. He gave way and burst again, um, bashed against a little side table next to the bed. A young policeman was told, don't look. And he said he did, and the image stayed with him for the rest of his life. This is the worst of the five murders. They got progressively worse as they went along. In this case, he'd taken his time over the killing, possibly done it by firelight, and certainly some kind of manic friend. When the first two policemen went into the room, one of them slid on the floor because of the blood and gore that was caked onto it. They looked over to the bed, and there was the body, naked except for a chemise that had been thrust under her armpits. She'd been laid open and disemboweled as the other girl's hand. Her uterus was missing, this time her heart was missing. He cut off her breasts, and along with a couple of vital organs, nose, ears, liver, kidney, placed it around the body itself. He tried to hack the head off, and he hadn't quite succeeded, and it was just hanging from the skin at the back of the neck, and so mutilated her face, she couldn't be recognised. He then drew out her intestines, and along with flesh that he stripped from her thighs down to her feet, exposing the thigh bones themselves, flung with this around the room. Some of it was hanging from the pitcher out above her, some of it banged into the wall himself. And for his last demonic act, he took a hand and plunged it into the gaping stomach. That's how they found the body was horrific. The place had sounded rather quirky though on that Friday morning because they took a photo of the unharmed eyes of Mary Kelly in the hope they could capture on film the last image she'd seen before she died. So we just got done with the Jack the Ripper tour and I'd have to say that was really, really entertaining. I liked it and all, my entire family liked it as well. So I think we're going out to get, to get food and then heading back to the hotel. So I'm gonna end it off here and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. speech and said his prayers. The prisoner would kneel down, placing his neck upon a block of oak. He would then give a word or signal. The executioner would. Yes, Axel only beheads his victory in one stroke. The executioner picks up the severed and still bleeding head. He holds it aloft for all to see. He turns to the assembled crowd and he proclaims, Behold the head of a traitor. So die, all traitors, God save the king.
So it's pretty cool behind me is where the final battle for Spider-Man Far From Home was filmed. And up there too is that one scene. That's pretty cool. Seeing right in front of it. So while we're kind of in this talk about Far From Home, I just shot a clip behind the Tower Bridge. And so it's pretty cool because there's this video I saw along, along back of behind the scenes of that of Far From Home and it showed the cast sort of walking up those stairs or running while filming. So you know it was pretty cool that we were in the same spot as where they filmed. So funny story, we were just sitting down to eat and we're eating at the same restaurant we ate for at lunch and we're doing it because it is pretty cheap and the food is really good but I don't know, it's just kind of funny how we're eating at the same place two, two meals in a row so see you guys after. So we're starting our day pretty early, pretty early today because the the bus that takes us to the Harry Potter Studios for uh, leaves at 8 and so we have to wake up at like so around 6 to walk over to Buckingham Palace which is where it, it is going to pick us up. It is around 7.10 right now and we're walking to get uh, like a small breakfast and then to the to the bus itself so it should be fun
got back from the Harry Potter studio tour about an hour and a half ago and we went to eat after but the tour was was amazing I would definitely suggest anyone who is a major fan or any a small fan of Harry Potter to to eventually come out to to London and then definitely go to this tour it had so much stuff to look at in terms of set pieces and a lot of information it was just really worth it so right now we are going on a four-hour bus tour around London in the Golden Tours which was also which was bought with the Harry Potter studio tour so we're gonna be doing this and then we'll probably finish our, up our day with something else but this is the last day Guys, it's Chris's brother right here. And oh, it's we're going on the train to Piccadilly. Does that sound fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it does. He sucks. So cool. Mom, how do you feel about going to Piccadilly? Uh, I look forward to seeing it. I heard it's kind of like a, I think like a Times Square. Or something like a, just a busy intersection. So, mm, Dad, see. how do you feel? Good, Ryan. I'm good. Mm, sounds boring. Well, we're going to go see a monument that Christopher read about. It sounds boring. So we're going to Soho. Soho. What? And Tunbridge. Black Mountain. Sun. So there's two right Christopher. Well, that was my adventure, and I really do hope you all enjoyed it because it took me so much time to put this all together and create all the marketing and all the Instagram stuff and the trailer and just trying to, just trying to promote it. And honestly, I had a lot of fun with it. So take a moment and reflect on this documentary to try and remember the different souvenirs that I got. And if you can't remember, I'll show you. The first one is from Germany, which is a music box that plays the Peter and the Wolf theme. And honestly, it's a really good souvenir and something to look back on in the future. You know, this is a theme that I immediately recognize in the shop. And I just knew it was the best choice for me apart from all of the other music boxes. Second souvenir is this compass from Switzerland and the quality of it is so-so because I'm not sure if it works 100% of the time 
the point is is that it is from Switzerland and it's from a Swiss gear store and it's something that is honestly pretty cool even though it doesn't work most of the time and the final souvenir is from London which I did not show in the documentary but it is a Big Ben statue which I got at a store next to the London Eye and for the price it is pretty awesome especially because a lot of the ones I found were broken and I got lucky with finding this one so those were the three souvenirs one souvenir for each country and they're nice tokens to have as memories as well as, as this video so I'm gonna wrap it up by saying thank you to everyone who watched because I'm honestly surprised if you made it this far and thank you to everyone who supports me and all the comments that came from Instagram and all of the support that you guys gave me it's honestly it's awesome and I couldn't be more any more thankful I really do hope you enjoyed this documentary it's something that I will hopefully be able to do in the future whether or not I make it into a full documentary or separate videos is the question I will have to decide on when the time comes but to end it off I'm just going to say just which means goodbye in German. <laughs>